Hey, welcome to the Daily Drive. My name is Mike Bro, and we've been walking through the journal of a king named Solomon who is trying to tell us all that if we want to wreck our lives the way he did, then by all means, reject godly wisdom. It is with deep regret that Solomon writes these words in his journal, Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, beginning with verse 17. He says, Better to hear the quiet words of a wise person than the shouts of a foolish king. Better to have wisdom than weapons of war. One sinner can destroy much that is good. A wise person chooses the right road. A fool takes the wrong one. And here he is reflecting on his own reign as king, his own headlong dive into foolishness and sin, and he admits, I took the wrong road. I ignored all the flashy warning signs. I plowed through the orange cones and the barrels. I disregarded the guardrails our loving Father put in place to keep us safe. I let my own foolishness corrupt the wisdom that God has so generously given me. I stopped listening to God. I stopped walking with God. I did whatever I wanted to do, and I wrecked my life. Now, it wasn't always that way. The book of Proverbs is one of the richest books in the world. If you've never read it, you ought to. I want, I want, I want us all to see just a few of the things Solomon wrote about wisdom when he was walking with God. He wrote things like this in Proverbs chapter 3, beginning in verse 13. Joyful is the person who finds wisdom, the one who gains understanding. For wisdom is more profitable than silver, and her wages are better than gold. Wisdom is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. She will guide you down delightful paths. All her ways are satisfying. Wisdom is a tree of life to those who embrace her. Happy are those who hold her tightly. My wife Debbie embraces that tree of life. She loves the book of Proverbs, probably her favorite book of the Bible. I would say that the, the pursuit of godly wisdom is why her character is so attractive. I think wisdom is the reason her life is the kind of life that so many people look at and say, man, I want to be like that lady. Proverbs 24, verse 3 and 4 is one of her favorite verses. We have it on a picture hanging on the wall in our house. It says this, By wisdom a house is built, and through understanding it is established. Through knowledge its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. Now she would tell you that Solomon's not talking about houses filled with valuable antiques or priceless paintings. It has nothing to do with granite countertops or cool contemporary furnishings. He's talking about lives that are rich. Hearts and homes that are full of things like joy and laughter and contentment and selflessness and hope and generosity, kindness and love, real treasure, deep things, internal things, eternal things. That's why it's so important for us parents to teach our kids to pursue godly wisdom. The impact of wisdom on their life is so much more significant than academic standing, IQ, test scores, or degrees. Let's face it, there's a whole lot of intelligent people who end up wrecking their lives. Vernon Cooper writes, These days, people seek knowledge and not wisdom. As a result, we are becoming a nation of technological giants and ethical infants. I believe one of the most important things I can do as a dad is to help my kids pursue godly wisdom, to establish guardrails to bump up against to remind them there's danger on the other side and to keep them on the road to real life. Now, there's a difference between a guardrail and that thin yellow line painted on the road, isn't there? One is set deep in the ground saying, if you go past me, you're in big trouble. The other is saying, it's probably not a great idea to go past me, but as you, as you can see, there's plenty of room for mistakes. Everyone in our culture, whether you really believe in God or not, knows that certain roads lead to some pretty, pretty big-time danger zones. That's just the human experience. Lots of people have wrecked their lives along the way. So, in an attempt to set some kind of boundary, our culture will say things like, drink responsibly. Now, I think that is a noble thing to say, and I think you should drink responsibly. But that's not a really solid guardrail. Because let me ask you, what's the definition of responsibly? And isn't that definition different for different people? In fact, it's been my observation that when people are drinking, they usually get past the point of being able to clearly discern between what's responsible and what's not. So without a predetermined guardrail in place, the line between irresponsible and responsible gets kind of blurry, like literally. 
So to say, drink responsibly, again, is a noble aspiration and a trendy slogan for beer commercials. But it's not a guardrail. It may be a thin yellow line painted on the side of the road, but it's not going to keep you from going over the edge. Or what about uh, the well-intentioned, don't have sex until you're ready? Really? Like, how's that work? Until you're ready? Guys are born ready. Again, it's an attempt at kind of setting some boundaries, but it's not a solid, immovable guardrail. It's not something that's been constructed in your heart ahead of time. It's not something firmly planted in your conscience. It's not something that's going to keep you safe physically, emotionally, spiritually from those pretty dangerous, even devastating consequences. Solomon gets real specific about this and speaks directly to men, especially more specifically to his sons. And he tells them, listen, you, you're going to need some guardrails in your life in regard to sex. Now, ironically, this is the main area that took Solomon down. But remember, this was written when he was trusting God's wisdom. And again, he paints wisdom as a beautiful woman of character. And on the flip side, he spends some time talking about the lack of wisdom as a seductive woman down the street who sets a trap for weak-willed men. This is what he writes. So now, my sons, listen to me. Never stray from what I'm about to say. Stay away from her. Don't go near the door of her house. In the end, you will groan in anguish when disease consumes your body. Drink water from your own well. Share your love only with your wife. Why spill the water of your springs in the streets having sex with just anyone? You should reserve it for yourselves. Never share it with strangers. Now, that's not merely, don't have sex till you're ready. That's not a thin yellow line by the side of a dangerous road. That's a guardrail. That's the decision to say, I'm going to do the whole sexual thing God's way. I don't go down that street. I don't walk into strip clubs. I don't view porn. I respect women. I don't flirt with anybody but my wife. I don't hook up casually. I don't care what our culture says. I don't care if everybody in school makes fun of me. I don't care if I am the 40-year-old virgin. I'm going to respect God's loving authority. I'm going to apply God's wisdom to all my relationships. He's my dad, and he knows what's best. I'm going to respect his guardrails. We have a good friend who never learned healthy boundaries growing up. She got caught in a bunch of stuff that took her to some extremely dark places, especially sexually. She's been learning God's ways and experiencing God's healing in some pretty amazing uh, ways. She wrote this prayer of commitment, and she gave me permission to read it to you. She said this, Today I commit my body, mind, and soul to Jesus. I commit this heart to purity and being set apart from the world for Him. Today I celebrate the fact that I have found value in myself, my relationships, and most of all, with God. I rejoice in the power to say no to instant gratification and yes to waiting for the real thing that comes sweetly after marriage. I say yes to my future husband who loved you enough and respected me enough to wait. I say yes to inviting God into all I do and goodbye to having to hide myself from Him. I say yes to wholeness today. I will guard my heart, eyes, and mind so that my actions will be pleasing to the lover of my soul. I will respect my fellows and live, dress, and speak modestly so I might not tempt others to stumble. I will take great measures to stay clear of any temptation that tries to distract me from the only love I know to be whole and true. I will spend the rest of my life falling deeper in love with my amazing Savior, Jesus Christ. I am thankful to the one who created in me a clean heart. I celebrate myself as a new creation. I offer myself to be fully His and fully known by Him. That's a guardrail. That's a plan to let God's wisdom guide your life. And you need to know, it's never too late to get back on the right road. He is the lover of your soul. He embraces, He forgives, He restores, He renews, He welcomes, He is the God of amazing grace. You say to a wretch like me, respect His wisdom today and keep it between the guardrails. I'll see you back here tomorrow.